In this exercise, we're going to perform a basic operation to merge a single pass CGI render and a background image, and we'll then investigate the limitations of manipulating the CGI image from within the composite. So if we take a look at this composition here, you can see that we've got two read nodes in here. If I just toggle between them, we can see at the first instance that we've got this uh, image of this background, um, and then we have this, uh, let's get over the right place, and we've got this CGI, uh, what looks suspicious like a BMW. Uh, so background image and a CGI car. While we're on the uh, while we're on the, the the CGI car, if I just did A to, to uh, view the alpha channel, you can see that this CGI uh, car already has a mat, which is going to help us to uh, merge the uh, the car with the background. We can switch between this view uh, by hovering our cursor over the viewing area and typing A, and then typing A again to go back to the RGB. Uh, we can also type the individual letters as in R for the red channel, G for the green channel, blue for the blue channel, and again if we hit the same uh, letter again we go back to the original RGB. So let's merge these, uh, these two layers together. So if we just select our car and type M, to bring up the merge node, we always connect our A pipe to the foreground object and our B pipe to the background object. So we'll do that and then we'll hook up the viewer to the merge itself. And we can see now that the two layers have indeed been merged. I'm just going to hold down control to bring up the dot nodes and just pull that out so that we've got uh, no diagonal pipes running across our node tree. So if we look at this composite it looks okay. Um, it clearly needs a shadow uh, but we will look at that in, in another exercise but it, it involves a, uh, a different set of compositing operations which I don't want to get into within this particular class. So let's say that we wanted to um, change the colour of the car, but we wanted to do that in a way that didn't affect, um, say for example, the reflections or the highlights or the shadows, if there were any shadows in this image. We wanted to colour correct, but without affecting the, the other elements of the image. So let's put this to the test. So we'll select our car image. While it's selected, if we just hit G, that will bring us up the grade node. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the grade, grade node. If I set this to 1, collide any other node, uh, node properties other than the one that's active, which at the moment is the grade node. And this is the one that I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the colour of this car. I'm going to take it into the blue va values. And I'm going to do that just using the gamma control. So I'm going to click on the swatch, just bring this into the screen capture area. And I'm going to take it into the blue, the blue domains of the colour. So I'm going to do that by raising up the the blue quite considerably and I'll just bring the green and the red down a little bit. And I'll close the swatch and let's just look at the image. We can see that every single part of the image is affected. The highlights, the speculars, every part of the image is affected and it's the, the outcome is a completely artificial result. Um, so I guess what we can deduce from that is that this approach is really quite limited and our only real ap approach to achieve our objective which would be to colour the car without affecting the specularity and the reflections and shadows etc would be to return back to our 3D application and re-render. So that's the end of this exercise. In the next exercise we'll take a look at uh, compositing with a multipass render set and how this can be used not only to gain control but also to enhance the look beyond what can easily be achieved within the CG application by itself.